When they leave, we have to close the station hatch as well. And now there are three people for about 10 days all by ourselves, and we get to do fun things. We get to pull out the fresh food we had hidden from Jeff and Max. <laughs> we get to make uh, breakfast tacos or breakfast burritos, and the, the trick here is to use bread that is not crumbly, so we're using a, a, a tortilla. And the other trick is to put the sauce down first so it acts like a glue to hold everything on. <laughs> we do haircuts. Alex told me to go cut Suichi's hair, told Suichi to cut my hair, and then Alex looked at the both of us and went, hmm, TJ needs to be the barber. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the, uh, doing normal house cleaning things, and of course, if you don't have a vacuum cleaner, you lose all the hair, so that's what the long clothes was. Typical playing with water, fun stuff. I'm trying to get rid of the bubbles in water so that the pumps don't cavitate. And, 10 days later, the new crew arrives, Sasha, Misha, and Tracy. And one of the fun things about new people is they always knock things off of walls. Watch, oh, like, he's just gonna reach up and put that back. Just nice, right there. There's Misha. And Tracy. And of course, the rule is, whenever you open a hatch, you have to do hugs and kisses. So that's okay. <laughs> Now, while I was up there, we got visited by three space shuttles. This is actually the second of the two, of the three. And when the space shuttle comes up, it hovers a little bit away from us and does this RPM, R bar pitch maneuver. And we're doing a very tightly choreographed photography survey of all the tiles. And we will take these photographs and we'll downlink them to the ground so that the ground can analyze to make sure that there are no tile damages for the shuttle's return. <laughs> Here's the RPM maneuver from the shuttle's vantage point. And when this shuttle arrives, they open the hatch. And this is a very momentous moment for Japan, actually. We have Soichi on the station side, Naoko on the shuttle side. This is the first time that Japan has had two astronauts in orbit together. And of course, once you do the hatch opening and you get all the equipment out of the way of the hatches, you have to do the obligatory hugs and kisses. And the nice thing about hugs and kisses in orbit is that it doesn't really matter what your orientation is, it's very easy to do. And once again, when, as we go back and do experiments and get back to work and stuff, we have to do logistics over and over again. And no kidding, this was completely fortuitous. When we put this uh, video clip in here, it's the same bag that I was working with last time. Naoko weighs about uh, 90 pounds, and this rack weighs about 1,800 pounds. And so you can see, of course, in a, in a microgravity environment, it's very easy to maneuver very massive things if you go slowly. And they're going to put this into its birthing place, but we're going to speed up the video here just so it goes more quickly. And you can see, because Naoko waves real fast. And this is a wharf. <clears throat> it's a window observational research facility where schools can actually control cameras in the, in the big laboratory window and take Earth observational photographs. One of the major events for us during our increment up there was the assembly and the, and the checkout of something called the small fine arm. This small fine arm goes on the end of the Japanese robotic arm. And it has a couple of little fingers, which you'll see here in a close-up in a second, that allow it to do extremely fine work and grab bolts. Soichi and I are now making sure that all the joints behave the way they're supposed to the little fingers. All the joints are behaving correctly in the right direction, the right magnitude. And it was an extremely successful checkout for us. Soichi here is working with what's called Melfi. It's a minus 80 degrees Celsius freezer where we stick a lot of our life, our biological samples, until the shuttle can come up and take them. So Suichi is taking them from Melfi and putting them inside another little thermos to be returned on the shuttle and analyzed on the ground. And one of the nice things about working with Melfi is 
not only is it extremely cold, but when you get done working with Melfi and you're going to put the tray back in, you get to experience what we call the poof maneuver. And you'll see that here in just a second. Here comes the poof maneuver. Poof. <laughs> On Fridays, we would have conferences with the ground, with the control team, and I was able to get started the old tradition where we're, we're wearing red shirts for Fridays and the ground joined us. And we would have a video conference, and Alec is the commander here. Um, he would often let me chit-chat with the ground, so we would hold the conferences in the lab and discuss things with, with the ground. Speaking of science, I volunteered a lot of my weekend time to put together facility experiments. This is a uh, fluids experiment that was not operational when I got up there. It took two or three weekends to actually assemble it, put it together, and get it operational. This rack is in the Japanese module, and once again, we were putting, using some of our own time to put the experiments together so the ground could do the remote control of the experiments. The shuttle guys had some downtime, so they played baseball. Clay hits a homer, and he's going to run around the bases. <laughs> this soccer ball actually made it to the World Cup. We, the, the shuttle crew flew it for the World Cup. And Sweet is going to be so happy because he actually scored. <laughs> Sweet and Naoko hosted a sushi dinner for us. And the reason why that's special is because it has to be very fresh food. And we really appreciated fresh food after being up there for four months. Exercise is important, two and a half hours a day we exercise. We felt like on, on the weightlifting machine in, in weightlessness. Back in the Russian segment, we typically shared our lunches back in the Russian segment. And uh, we get ready now again for the third of the three shuttles that come up. And this shuttle is delivering the Russian module that Oleg and Max were doing the spacewalk for in preparation. This is real time. This is how slowly we come together. And of course, after hatch opening, you have to do hugs and kisses. Yeah. Garrett, you may have recognized Garrett there. Garrett stands about this tall, so when I could let him go in a module and he couldn't touch a ceiling, a floor, or any walls, we could just leave him there for a while. <laughs> Their primary mission was to deliver what was called Mima Ming, and this is the robotic operation that actually docks that module to the space station, Com computing for the most part the Russian segment. Soichi, talk about international crews, Soichi is working on an experiment in the European module, and he's changing out samples to be returned back to Earth. I worked with some plants, and, and these fir trees I pulled out, the air goes back through the hatches back to the Russian segment. Within about two minutes, the Russians come down to our half of the station and say, what smells so good? Okay. Cleaning is a weekly thing, and here's Suichi cleaning. Okay. And one of the nice things about our time together when we were up there is that we were able to see what's called the window <coughs> of the world, cupola, mm -hmm. this uh, <coughs> seven-windowed window. And we were up there for April 1st, April Fools, so we had to do a small little joke with the ground. <laughs> but this is a wonderful window to do Earth observations with, and this is where you get to see what the world looks like from a very nice vantage point. These photographs are unretouched. This is how we take the, the photos. Here's Crete in Greece. <laughs> 